Welcome back to a bit gamey and uh, second instalment of basic tips. Uh, yeah, some of these I know some of these aren't probably tips exactly, but they're well, they're things that I've you know come across along the way. So first thing, as you may notice on the camera, is some kind of paint rack. Once you get past a certain number of paints, the uh, the amount of space they take up on the on the desk starts getting a bit excessive. So any kind of vertical paint rack which uh, reduces the footprint is um, pretty useful. I don't know, I um, can't remember what the, the make of this was. This one was, I got it from somewhere. Um, but yeah, very good. It takes up maybe you know, half the space or less than the uh, previous arrangement. Uh, that's one. Number two is uh, paints like this, acrylic, grass green, or burnt umber, or whatever. Basically what I do is um, I paint bases, some you know base colour, before doing all the other stuff with flock and the rest of it. And uh, so far the only paint I've actually used up was the brown I'd been using to do um, paints. Do, uh, to do bases, whereas this stuff, obviously you can see, is uh, a lot bigger and you only need a tiny amount and watered down to do all your base painting. And this is probably also coming useful for um, terrain if and when I uh, get to making any terrain. So these things, good for the kind of you know, because it's just it's just basically cheaper. It's, I, mean, it's a, I don't know if it's the same stuff. I mean, it's you know close enough, but um. It does the job for all the kind of uh, sort of wide areas of um, painting. Uh, the second thing, I mean, this isn't a tip so much. Well, it's kind of a tip, a kind of backwards tip. Is uh, when I was buying that acrylic paint, I saw these these brushes. They're called acrylic brushes, and uh, they're very stiff. And I assume that was just you know something to do with how they were, and they get uh, softer once you um, you know put them in water or whatever. But no, they're meant to be really stiff uh, because I, mean, I didn't know this. So this is a, more of a negative tip that um, you know, when you're actually doing art painting with oil paints or acrylics, you know you want a stiff brush because you kind of you're basically using it as a kind of trowel because you know the, the paint's very thick and stuff. So you, you basically have to physically force it over the um, whatever you're painting on the canvas, I expect. So I got a whole bag of these. It's not it's not a lot of money, but I got a whole bag of these and. Uh, you know, I can actually use one for doing the basing. That means I've got about, I don't know, six or so of these other ones from the packet, which will, you know, I'm sure they'll, you know, in about a hundred, you know, I imagine this one will wear out eventually. And uh, so I've probably got enough replacements for a couple of hundred years. So, you know, if you've got very long term. We're looking at things that's a bargain, but otherwise it's a bit of a waste. But I say, you know, one of them is okay for doing, um, you know, basis train and such, but you know, you don't want to get more than one. And to be honest, it's, it's the other brushes are probably probably more useful. And that's, that's a sort of side effect. The side, um, not side effect, what's the word? A side swipe on that is that if you're wandering in an art shop, wondering about brushes. I mean, again, this is probably obvious to most people, but it wasn't to me. Uh, you're actually looking for watercolour brushes. You know, if, if you're looking around, there's always different brushes for different things. And the ones that are actually, you know, good for miniature painting is um, are the watercolour ones. Another thing I found out, again, this isn't a tip, it's just interesting to me. Was, you know, when you look at the price of all these different uh, brushes, the, um, the expensive ones are... You know, a sable they're like from animal hair, and the cheapest ones are from nylon, and the ones in the middle are kind of a mixture of sable and nylon, or you know. And so you know, the more sable they are, the more expensive they are, and potentially the better they are. So anyway, so that explains the pricing of them. Uh, what else was there? Uh, paint, paint, paint. Yeah, the other thing I got a couple of metal models. So I did a review on one of the. Um, S SHG uh, models 
the, ta the Stug 3. We also had a, a, a chariot um, from Warlord that was um, metal. And uh, one of the things you need for that is files. So if, um, if the metal model has got, you know, if the plastic model has got a flash on it, you can just cut it off with a standard uh, craft knife. But if it's metal, you've got to file it off. Um, well, you, yeah, you mostly have to file it off. So if you're going to do any kind of uh, you know, any kind of models and model kits that are made of metal, then you're going to need files. So that's something to bear in mind. I mean, I got uh, a set of tools. Well, I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I just got a set of tools from from the I think it was Army Painter and that had this in it. But um, but yeah, if you if you I don't know what the quality of the tools are, but they had these things already. Um, so yeah, if you're going to do any kind of metal stuff, you're going to want a file. And it may be useful for the plastic stuff as well, I don't know. And on secondly, on for that, same thing is uh, a pin drill. These are like little drills that you can turn in one hand. Bunch of, they come in a packet of a bunch of different drill size, a bunch of different drill bit sizes. And again, on metal models and sometimes on plastic ones, there's probably as well uh, plastic kits. You know, being able to drill a tiny little hole is um, very useful. So you want one of those. Uh, sculpting tool it's very useful for splashing um, uh, you know filler slash spackle on bases and on bases and stuff uh, into you know we said when you've got figures on the base you've got a nice narrow end on one for um, you know getting the getting the filler into little little spaces. So these are all little things that um, you know you might want at some point. I'd say particularly if you're using metal stuff or if you're doing train and you know fancy bases. So files, drills, sculpting tools, and the last thing I think it's the last thing I probably probably forgot something is um, I don't know if this is this is actually a tip or not, but you know again I, I got these clippers in the um, same army painter set. And they're quite good. I mean, they're, you know, they're quite chunky, and they'll gone through quite a lot of um, plastic sprues or the you know, plastic figures. But um, I had a problem recently with um, a couple of the kits. One of the um, the tank with a little uh, uh, kind of thin pieces to make a kind of aerial at the back, and uh, and the Svesda machine guns. There's some very thin bits of plastic, which you know, if you are using chunky clippers. Then they'll they'll you know, have a tendency to snap when you try and cut them off the sprue. So I'm wondering if if the problem is that these are you know chunky or you know something wrong with these clippers for doing delicate. Say so these are fine for doing chunky stuff, but I'm wondering if there's a if there's a, a problem with them for delicate things or whether I should have been using a craft knife or whether I don't know because I've only done it twice and um, done it it's gone wrong twice. But so I'm still experimenting and whether I need to just use a craft knife for things like that things that. Because they're um, they're quite thick, or rather, if they're too thick, if the clip is too thick, and so you have to clip the piece uh, too far away from um, too far, you know, the, the lug that's left over is too far away from the other thing. And if it's really thin, then it's hard to um, cut off that lug or sand that lug down without snapping the part. So, so what do I don't know? It's either need some more delicate versions of these, or just use a craft knife instead. I don't know yet. I have to I have to get some more bits that I know. <laughs> I have to get I don't know. I have to, I have to get some bits that I know will break and then try and figure out how to not break it. But yeah, so that's an issue. So I think you might need two lots of these. A chunky one for doing the general things, you know, churning through um, warlord uh, sprues. And uh and a much more delicate one, maybe. Either that or or um uh cloth knife. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a general thing actually on a separate kind of note, which is the sort of plastic. You know, the different kinds of plastic. There's a, I think there's a there's a trade off between quality of the detail and how breakable they are. So it's like the harder they are, the um, easier they are to snap, but the better the detail. For example, you know, I've got these um, plastic. High pass pists, Macedonian high pass pists, high pass pists. Um, very nice figures, you know, detail very crisp and all that jazz. 
but um, let's say snap had buggery. Yeah, like uh, of the first six, I um, I cut out to um, you know to do the first batch. Two of them, the spears broke off. And if you compare that with um, you know a warlord, you know phalanx, they're more bendy. So um, and then if I had some somewhere. Um, like uh, and the soft plastic 20 mil, they're, they're well actually that's not too bad. But some of them are too bendy, you know. They, 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 so they're you know things like the uh, weapons that can be all over the place. So although it's walled figure, the detail is not as crisp because the plastic isn't as hard. You also don't have to worry about breaking the um, breaking the, uh, the, the the pike. Whereas these uh, Vitrix ones, the detail is crisper, but you know, the plastic is harder. But you know they don't bend. You know I don't want to do it because it's going to snap off. But you know you can't you can't barely bend that without it snapping. Whereas this one you can play about a bit like no one's business. So that's an issue. I say it's not a criticism of either of them. I think it's a, I think there's definitely a trade-off. You know uh, the hard you know the hard plastic is uh, more brittle, but you know hold de holds the detail better. So again you know come at, that's probably why people use metal for so long. Because it you know, it's hard, so it holds DL, but it's not brittle. So there you go. Takes you, you know, pays your money, takes your choice. But um, what, does that, what does that get to that? Oh yes, yeah, so, you know, but the, the basic point about that in terms of tips is you might need two of these. I still don't. I don't actually know yet. So it's not really a tip. Um, so I need to get some more fragile things to cut. But yeah, you might want a chunky one of these for June general, and a very delicate one for. Um, these really thin, hard plastic pieces that snap when you try and cut them off the sprue. Um, is there any more? Uh, if there is, I've forgotten it. Okay, look, so that's the end of um, basic tips. And say so these are very, I mean, most people are going to know all this before already. This is just for people who just, you know, come back, coming back into it after 30 years, and either didn't know this stuff or forgotten it. Um, yeah, I say, if there's any more, I've forgotten it. Okay, look, cheers a bit.